on April 5th. You must be very careful, Margaret. It's the girl. Witness the birth. Bad things will start to happen. Evil things of evil. It's all for you. No, no, don't. The first omen. I believe the girl is to be the mother. Mother of what? Is the most terrifying. 666 is the mark of the devil. Hey! Movie of the year. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. Who said that? The first omen. Rated R. Under 17, not a minute without parent. Only in theaters April 5th. We are. We are. We are cultivate. 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 We are cultivate. Hello and welcome to Yield Crime where we discuss the funny, strange, and obscure crimes of yesteryear. I'm your host, Lindsay Valenti, and with me is my sister and co-host, Maddie Stangle. Hello. Prior to us hitting record, I had (laughs) kind of a word vomit sesh with Maddie that I won't get into. So instead, we are going to dive back into Wicked Mock Madness Look at my madness. And we are going to be traveling back to Scotland to discuss the North Berwick Witch Trials. Ooh, salty. It is actually pretty salty in this one. Yeah. Yeah. Information was pulled from the following sources. A 2021 Rambling History blog post. 2021 Spooky Scotland article. 2017 Goblin's Head article by Martin Coventry. Anton Praetorius, BBC Bite Size Case Study, End Goal Article, Historic UK Article by Terry Stewart, Luke Maston's Witchcraft Website, The National Library of Scotland, The National Museums of Scotland, so there's two links from there, and nice. Wikipedia. And links to all of these articles will be included in the show notes. If you're interested in ad free content, Consider supporting us with a one-time donation either over on Buy Me a Coffee or our Venmo page, both of which are in our link tree and in the show notes. North Berwick is a seaside town in Scotland on the south shore of the Firth of Forth, which is a really fun thing to say. Wow. I would love to hear them say it (laughs) with their accent. The Firth of Forth. (laughs) That was... Probably more Irish than Scottish. So Probably, I but it's so good. <laughs> it was close. For people outside of Scotland, this is approximately 20 miles or 32 kilometers northeast of the capital of Edinburgh. Hmm. Okay. And as of 2021, this fishing town boasts a population of 14,800 people. Yeah, so it's pretty big. Mm-hmm. Today, North Berwick is a pretty great place to live, recently being voted the best place to live in Scotland in the Sunday Times. Wow. So not too shabby. Unless you're a witch. (laughs) But back in 1590, it was ground zero for some of the most barbaric and horrific witch trials to ever take place in the whole of Scotland, all thanks to King James VI. Wow. You know that's bad if they were the worst of the worst, because, like, Scotland and their torture? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say they knew how to do it right. They did it. They were very good at prolonging suffering. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't short, that's for sure. mm For context, he became the King of Scotland in 1567, when his mother, Mary Queen of Scots, was forced to abdicate the throne. Fun fact, he was one at the time. Perfect. Obviously, he had regents ruling in his stead until 1579, when he was formally inducted as king at the age of 12. Right, because a 12-year-old would know just what the country needs. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. Precocious. Mm -hmm. Just as an aside, his mother Mm -hmm. passed the Scottish Witchcraft Act of 1563, in which, quote, no person may use witchcraft, sorcery, or communicate with the dead under the penalty of death, end quote. 
<laughs> so don't talk to the dead unless you want to be one of them. Yes. Got it. And this event slash events took place when Catholicism and Protestantism are starting to clash because mm. they're starting to kind of marry in Scotland. So there's a lot Got of it. religious tension going on mm -hmm. that is kind of an undercurrent to these events. Right. Like it almost like witchcraft would be a unifier for these people. A little bit. Yeah. So just kind of keep that in the back of your brain as you hear this. Okay. In September of 1589, Anne of Denmark, who was the sister of the Danish king, King Christian IV, disembarked from Copenhagen to Edinburgh so she could marry James. Hmm. At the time, he was 23 and she was 14. Gross. Super gross. As she set out to cross the North Sea, her ship encountered storms so strong and dangerous that she was forced to turn back and hunker down in Norway for several weeks. Hmm. At least she survived. Yeah. In response, James set out to join her there on October 22nd, and the pair married in Oslo in November of that year. Aww. They ended up returning to Scotland in April of 1590, where they once again encountered dangerous storms as it blew their fleet off course near the coast of East Lothian. And one ship in their fleet actually sank as a result of the storm. Still, not bad. It was just full of, like, royal treasure and stuff. So it's not like it was... I mean, it's, a, it's the messy tax. <laughs> yep. King James was convinced that the unusual storms were a result of witches at North Berwick, who were preventing mm -hmm. him from returning with his queen. And subsequently... Several members of the Scottish court, as well as a number of people from Denmark, were accused of committing acts of witchcraft to sabotage both their journeys. So her trip mm. there, and then both of their trip back to Scotland. Right, because he was able to go with no issue. Yep. In April and May of 1590, so they got back to Scotland in April, mm. witch trials were held in Copenhagen. Copenhagen? Copenhagen? during which a woman named Anna Colding had been arrested and accused of performing acts of witchcraft. Uh-oh. While under torture, she confessed that she and several other women had sent demons after the then Princess Anne to prevent her from traveling to Scotland. Mm. But only under torture. Yes. Convenient. You'll find that's a, that's a common theme. Yeah. I bet you'd start to say anything. After a while. Yep. As a result of these trials, Anna and 12 other victims, which included the mayor's spouse, would be executed. Damn. Even the mayor's wife isn't safe. No, she wasn't. After this, King James decided to set up his own tribunal. And just as an FYI, what I just shared with you is like the TLDR version of the Danish witch trials. That right, I bet it was really awful. Yeah, that were a result of this event. Hmm. The Scottish trials began in 1590, and several people from East Lothian, Scotland, would find themselves accused of performing acts of witchcraft. This sensational trial was the first major case of witchcraft persecution in Scotland, with the first of its, of its victims being that of Galus Gilly Duncan. Oh, she's got such a cute name. Yeah, so as I'm going through these names, just know that I am sharing the most quoted version of their names. There were a lot of different spellings, a lot of different pronunciations. So I'm just going with the ones that were... The most frequent. The most frequently used. Like with Princess Anne slash Princess mm -hmm. Anna. Just know that I'm going with uh, the most popular version. We'll just say that. <laughs> Galus was the servant of a magistrate from Tranet East Lothian named David Seton. She was a known healer who often disappeared mm. at night, most likely to help those in need with their ailments. Yep. So she was a servant during the day, would scamper off at night, and wouldn't tell 
her employer where she went. Yeah, because she probably would be fired. Fearing that she was up to no good, David had her arrested Mm. for witchcraft. Right. I'm sure he was very fearful. After enduring torture using pillywinks, which is essentially a thumb screw in which the thumb would be compressed via a vice of two bars, although some versions were lined with sharp metal points Uh. for the sole purpose of puncturing the nails. Yep. Yep. The sizes of thumb screws varied, with some mm. only working for one thumb or big toe, while other versions could hold both big toes, all five mm. fingers of one hand, or even all ten toes. Mm. And in addition to this, she was said to have a devil's mark on her throat. Great. Because she could help that too. And for those that are unfamiliar with the concept of devil's marks, it's essentially a quote-unquote mark where the devil or one of his familiars was draining blood from the supposed witch in order to cement their contract. And this Mm -hmm. could be, this was often something like moles or Mm -hmm. skin tags or some sort of birthmark, some sort of discoloration on the body. Mm -hmm. The weirder the shape, the the more evil it was. Yeah, yeah. Could you think of, like, all the poor people with, like, the port wine birthmarks, too? Mm Mm-hmm. You'd be so afraid. (sighs) Galus confessed to working with other witches from Edinburgh and East Lothian, who were behind the attempts to sink the king's ships. All of the men and women that she accused were rounded up, arrested, and questioned, including widow Agnes Sampson from Haddington, Agnes Mm -hmm. Thompson from Edinburgh, Dr. John Fian from Preston Pans, Janet Stratton, Donald Robson, George Mott's wife in Edinburgh, Janet Blandelands, the Potter's wife of Seton, the Smith of Bridge Hallis, as well as, and these are the ones that have a lot more information about them, Barbara Napier, who was a member of Edinburgh's High Society, mm-hmm. Euphemia McCalsian who was part of Edinburgh's legal dynasty and a prominent heiress, Robert Damn. Grierson, who was a skipper that was tortured to death during interrogations. <gasps> oh, man. Janet Kennedy, who was the supposed witch of Redden. The fifth Earl of Bothwell, Francis Stuart, who had led an mm-hmm. unsuccessful rebellion against the king, who was his cousin. So convenient that he was also a witch. Yep. He was arrested and imprisoned in Edinburgh Castle in April of 1591. With him, he was imprisoned for several years, was able to escape and be on the lam for a while, and then stage another rebellion against his cousin. (laughs) And he had an army that he was able to amass with, like, the real-life version of Robin Hood, and it didn't work out. It was a whole thing. Like, why wouldn't you just quit while you're ahead dude like just go yeah just leave leave the country it's Mm -hmm. fine and lastly richie graham who was a magician and necromancer that was known by high society who was arrested on november 11th 1590 and taken to toll booth in edinburgh and for those unfamiliar toll booth was a prison in edinburgh one of the most famous ones that they had could you imagine just being like a party magician mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you're, and then you're accused of being an actual witch and you're like wait 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 wait! all of that was fake <laughs> it wasn't long before over a hundred suspected witches were rounded up in north barrack with many confessing to their crimes under acts of torture that were performed at the old toll booth in edinburgh under the orders of king james mm-hmm. the story was that the quote-unquote witches were said to hold their covens on the Aldkirk Green, which today is part of North Barracks Harbor area. Under torture, they confessed to meeting the devil under the cover of darkness at St. Andrew's Church on Halloween of 1590, where 200 witches committed a litany of evil deeds, such as plotting to poison the king by collecting venom from a black toad, in which they would Mm. create the poison. Right. The attempted sinking of his ships... They would Mm -hmm. sing, they would dance. Everyone had to literally kiss Satan's ass. 
Mm. Casual. Interesting. And they also performed reversed baptisms using black candles and prayers. Mm. Just curious, what denomination is St. Andrews? It's Catholic. Yeah. Because he was Catholic. Yeah, which was the main religion at the time. Right. So that would have even been more of a scandal that it was Mm -hmm. the Catholic Church. It is said that at this quote-unquote revel, the devil had the witches dig up corpses at the church, collect Mm -hmm. different bones and organs, which he proceeded to attach to a dead cat that he then baptized, which was thrown into the sea in order Mm -hmm. to raise a storm that would sink the ships carrying King James the Sixth and his wife back to Scotland. They all came up with the same thing. That's crazy. Yep. Wow. Must have been some some shindig, I tell you what. <laughs> Strapping a bunch of human human organs to a dead cat. That's uh that's my Saturday night. <laughs> Quite the shindig, one might say. Yeah. Oh my god. Two of the most significant victims who were accused were that of Agnes Sampson, who was a respectable older woman from Humby, or I think I mentioned as well that she was also noted to be from Haddington. So Haddington slash Humby was was the name of it. And a schoolmaster and scholar from Preston Pans named Dr. John Fian. Mm -hmm. And both endured unholy amounts of torture before they eventually confessed. Yeah, I bet. I bet it was just awful. Could you imagine yep. even trying to, like, guess that fucking story to make it stop? hmm Like, you have yep. to guess. You have to guess that to make it stop. Mm-hmm. Not in my wildest dreams would I have put that Mad Libs together. No. mm Oh, my God. In the case of Agnes, she was brought in front of King James himself and a council of his nobles at Holyrood Palace. As I mentioned, she was a known healer in Scotland, helping both the poor as well as lords, lairds, and their women from Durleton, Prestonpans, Dalkeith, and North mm-hmm. Berwick. She also performed as a midwife when necessary. Yeah. So, so of course, she, she's the typical target. She was forced to have her head and body hair shaved mm. before she was fastened to the wall of her cell by means of the witch's bridle or the scold's bridle. For those who may be unfamiliar or who missed our episode on torture devices, Mm -hmm. a witch's bridle is an iron instrument consisting of four sharp prongs that are forced into the mouth. It is designed so that two of the prongs hold down the tongue and the other two press against the inside of the cheeks. Oh my God. The device goes over the head and straps in the back like a giant muzzle. So she was attached to the wall by the back part of the muzzle, of the bridle. That's horrific. In addition to this, she was forced to stay awake and thrown about thanks to a rope that had been tied about her head. Great. So she's constantly just shredding her tongue to pieces. Yep. Only after enduring these treatments did she ultimately confess to the 53 indictments that were levied against her. And her confession is the one that linked all of those accused to the plot to kill the king. God. Quote, Moreover, she confessed that at the time when his majesty was in Denmark, she took a cat and christened it, and said cat was conveyed into the midst of the sea by all these witches, sailing in their riddles or sieves. This done, there did arise such a tempest in the sea as a greater hath not been seen. The said christened cat was the cause that the king's majesty's ship at his coming forth from Denmark had a contrary wind to the rest of his ships, end quote. So his was the only ship that was sent purpose, like, quote unquote, Mm -hmm. purposefully off course, even though all of the ships in the fleet entered this storm. His was the only one that was diverted. Agnes was tried and found guilty on January 27th, 1591, and later garroted and burned as a witch the following day. What's garroted again? It's when you're strangled by something. Great. Typically like a thin rope. 
In the case of Dr. Fian, his torture is the stuff of nightmares. So I'm going to include a trigger warning for this. It's that okay. bad. Oh, God. My, my like, nails on my hands already hurt. He had his fingernails pulled out mm -hmm. before they were replaced by iron pins. Oh, my God. He also had to endure the pilly winks, which are the thumb screws, mm -hmm. as well as the boot, which was designed to cause crushing injuries to the foot specifically, although sometimes the leg as well. Mm. There are various versions of this torture method, and the version Dr. Fian was subjected to was an iron casing designed to break bones by having his legs put into tight clamps into which wedges of wood would be hammered. Mm. So a slow shatter and crush. Yes, of his legs. In the end, he also confessed, and as a result, he was taken to Castle Hill in Edinburgh, where he was strangled and burned at the stake following his December 26th, 1590 trial. Mm. It was after learning that a plot had been made, seemingly by the devil, to have him killed, that King James VI took a personal interest in the case and ordered all the main suspects to be brought to Edinburgh to stand trial. So sure. Agnes was the first one to be brought before him in Edinburgh, and he believed her story enough that he was like, all these other people that she named as being at this sabbath need to come here as opposed to being tried back in north barrack where they started to be tried mm -hmm. over the course of two years oh my god between 1590 and 1592 70 to 200 people were accused of and executed for committing witchcraft in east lothian the general consensus is that the number is around 70 but numbers vary due to lack of proper documentation. Right. And you don't know how many people like died in transit or, yep. you know, died previously before they even were sent. There are accounts of some people who did decide to complete suicide in jail. As opposed I, to pro I probably would seriously consider it. Yep. I think if I was accused, I would have been like, yep, it's me. Burn me up. Yep. What do you want to know? Yep. All manner of torture devices were used to extract confessions, including the breast ripper, mm. which consisted of four pronged levers that would encase no. the breast. No. And then they would rip it from the chest. No. And their favorite was sleep deprivation because people would eventually get to the point that they would yeah. just say anything. Yeah. To make it stop. Barbara Napier, who was married to Archibald Douglas, wasn't so much accused of being a witch as of enlisting the services of Agnes Sampson and Richie Graham in order to help her friend Jean Leon, the wife of the 8th Earl of Angus, who was suffering severe bouts of vomiting throughout her pregnancy. So because she knew that Agnes was a healer and because... Richie Graham was this quote unquote magician slash necromancer that was mm -hmm. known throughout high society and the court. She was like, guys, I need help for my friend. Yeah. Apparently, Barbara was also used as an intermediary when Jean asked Agnes to perform magic to kill her husband. Mm. Whether true or not, the Earl had died in August of 1588. So this was prior to the trials taking place. Right. Barbara had also enlisted the services of Richie Graham to help cure her son when he fell ill, reportedly giving him a ring that he was to enchant to cure his ailments. Been healthy, yeah. When she was later declared innocent of all charges at her May 1591 trial, King James had the verdict changed on June 6, 1591, and had her executed following a stay after she claimed to be pregnant. There is no written evidence that she was put to death, but it's entirely possible that she was executed later in 1591 along with five others because she Holy had been shit. imprisoned. So he just he just didn't like her at that point. 
he was just like no pretty pretty sure she's she's a witch we're we're just gonna we're gonna reverse that crazy because i imagine that like being having any sort of innocence verdict is like unheard of yeah well and the fact that she was she wasn't a noble by any chance but she was part of like the gentry Mm -hmm. you know so it was that's why to me it it smells petty like he just didn't like that guy yeah he just didn't like her spouse or whatever or his wife didn't like her something euphemia mccalsian's trial started june 9th 1591 although she had been in prison since may 7th several claims that she had been present at witch gatherings had been levied against her with three of the accused claiming that she had handled a waxen image of King James at these meetings, hinting that the Earl of Bothwell would be the new king. Ooh, yeah. This accusation would lead to charges of treasonous witchcraft. Yep, so it wouldn't even matter now if she was a witch, she's gonna die. Mm -hmm. Other claims were that she consulted fellow witches to kill her husband, Patrick, She was also accused of causing the death via witchcraft of her nephew, father-in-law, a young girl, and many others, as well as the attempted poisoning of Joseph Douglas, who she had reportedly tried to secure a marriage with via sorcery following the death of her husband, Patrick. Okay, so she was not well-liked at all. She was somebody people just wanted to get rid of and torture. Yeah. And... The guy she, quote-unquote, attempted to poison, who wouldn't agree to marry her, didn't agree to do so because he was already engaged to somebody else. Got it. So it wasn't necessarily that she was trying to poison him. It was that he was literally actively courting someone else. Someone else. else. Makes you wonder who the the other lady was and who, who her family was, you know? Yeah, if there was some sort of feud going on there between the two women. On June 12th, a panel of gentry found her guilty of 10 of the 28 charges that were led against her, as well as two counts of attending witch meetings. She was sentenced to be burned alive and forfeit all of her estates on June 15th. Yeah, this was totally a political move. A thousand percent. With her execution stayed until it was proven that she was not, in fact, with child, as she had claimed. Mm Mm-hmm. Euphemia was taken to Castle Hill, where she was tied to a stake and burned alive on June 15th, 1591. What a horrible death. Galus, who was the first to be accused in Scotland in connection with the king, and whose torture ended with her accusing a number of others, declared that her testimony was false immediately prior to her execution. It didn't save her, and she was strangled before being burned. I wonder if she did it, though, trying to save the others. Maybe. Because I feel like at that point, you know that there's no hope for you. Yep. But I would be wracked with guilt if I would have said anybody else's name. And they would probably yep. wouldn't have stopped unless she would have. Yeah. Richie Graham would go on to be executed as well in February of 1592. Following the North Berwick witch trials, King James wrote a book detailing the dangers of witches. Hmm. titled Demonology. It was published a few years later in 1597 and is the only book of its kind to be written and published by a king. Yeah, I bet it's just a bunch of chicken scratch and drawing of flames. (laughs) It didn't even really detail the crimes that he personally, or the, the trials that he personally oversaw. It detailed a lot of the later trials that took place in Scotland. And it actually was a three-volume book. That's disgusting. Yeah. Fun fact, King James was named King of England in 1603, where he continued to champion against witches and witchcraft, which resulted in the 1604 Act Against Conjuration, Witchcraft, and Dealing with Evil and Wicked Spirits that was passed by the English Parliament. Great. James's hatred of witches and witchcraft was so well known that it and the North Berwick trials themselves were incorporated into Shakespeare's Macbeth, although not by name. Yep. 
And it wasn't until years later that King James accepted that many of the people that had been accused of witchcraft and put to death had been unfairly accused. And it would be even later still, like 124 years later, that a new law would be put into place that spelled the end of witch trials across the UK and Scotland altogether. Isn't that crazy that, like, there are so many just insane laws everywhere to this day, and the only reason why they still exist is because we haven't made them stop? Yeah. Like, all we have to do is say, JK, LOL, never mind. But, like, to do it to all of them, so, like, it'll never happen. Yeah. That's why it's still illegal to have, like, a horse in a bathtub in Iowa or some shit. Yeah. (laughs) I think it's a donkey. You can't bathe a donkey in the bathtub in Iowa. It's against the law. And that is the North Berwick Witch Trials. Horrific. My nails will be in pain for the rest of the day. Thanks. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Looking for more content? You can find us online at yieldcrimepodcast.com. If you'd like to see pictures from this week's episode, not to mention bonus content and funny memes, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Yield Crime Pod and on Facebook and Instagram at Yield Crime Podcast. On TikTok, of course you are. Follow us at Yield Crime Podcast. Do you find true crime podcasts too murdery? Do you hate true crime altogether? Has that pesky day job kept you from the life of crime you've been dreaming of? Do you breathe oxygen? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then we have the podcast for you. Live Laugh Larceny, a true petty crime podcast, brings the drama to dumb criminal stories, presenting each crime as a fully produced short story. Our variety show podcast has it all. Sound effects, parody songs, terrible reenactments, and did we mention drama? Join us, Amanda and Trevin, each Wednesday as we share our dreadful dilemmas, killer facts, and then jump into the sick and twisted world of petty crimes. We're talking old people fights, scorned lovers, and people solving their problems with feces. That's enough with the listing. Let's roll the clip. Thank you all for joining us today as we announce the gender of our little peanut. Cheryl shouted out. I'm not sure what exactly Anthony came up with for this reveal, but he has told me to warn you all to please step back and plug your ears. So if you'll all join me in a countdown, three, two, one. It was at that moment, a gigantic explosion erupted from the ground below at the quarry. Releasing immense amounts of pressure out into the air, The boom sent chunks of earth flying and panic to spread throughout the event. Shockwaves rattled the foundation in which guests stood and didn't stop there. Traveling at rapid speed, cracks in the earth began to spread throughout a 20-mile radius, causing pictures to fall off of nearby home walls and turning tap water a murky brown color. You can find Live Laugh Larceny on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Bye. See ya. And this month's (sighs) podcast plug is the Live Laugh Larceny podcast, hosted by two longtime friends, Amanda and Trevin. Live Laugh Larceny sets out to change everything you know about true crime and comedy podcasts. Live Laugh Larceny brings you small-time petty crimes in an overly dramatic tone. So if you've ever felt that true crime podcasts were a little too murdery, or you think that having your phone stolen is the worst thing that can ever happen to a person, come and get petty. And we will have a link to their show in the show notes. Nice. This week's question comes from our lovely friend Carrie Ann. Hi, Carrie Ann. And she would like to know, would you rather be locked in a mall with 20 zombies or be trapped in the sewers with Pennywise? Hmm. Sewers with Pennywise. Because if I'm trapped in a mall, I'd be able to survive longer (laughs) as a diabetic (laughs) because I'd have access to like more food. But with Pennywise, I mean, I have been told I look young, so hopefully (laughs) my death would be swift. (laughs) Children. I've never actually seen either of the it iterations. I've seen the begin I've seen part of it when I was a kid, and that's why I was so afraid of clowns for so long. I think our cousins were watching it. 
when they were babysitting us once, came downstairs and I saw part of it and I'll never be the same. Yeah, I should probably watch one of them at some point, but I just haven't done it. I fucking hate zombies. I think I would take the zombies. Yeah. Just because chances are I could lock myself in a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Which, they all have Starbucks cafes now. Yep. Food's not that bad. If nothing else, I could brew myself all the coffee I want until it runs out. Like, ration out whatever food Yeah, those lemon there. loaves will stand the test of time if they're sealed. <laughs> yeah. And there's bathrooms in there. And I can read whatever book I want. Mm -hmm. So Just don't make a frappuccino. It would be too noisy. Yeah. I'm going off the assumption that they're wandering the halls of the mall and, mm -hmm. like, I can lock myself into one of the stores. Yeah. That's the assumption I'm going off of. Otherwise, I can't run. I don't know how fast these zombies are going to be. Right. They are different in speed in every iteration. So I'd probably get eaten eventually. But I'm hoping that when I get to that point, I will have just starved to death. And they'll be like, oh, there's nothing here to eat. Ew, gross. Lean. <laughs> this is just human jerky. What? <laughs> this sucks. So, there. Thank you, Carrie Ann. Yeah. What's something good you'd like to share this week? I got the best thing ever over the weekend. I've been wanting one for so long because I've seen it on, like, TikTok. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's a dog grooming vacuum where you can brush them and it's got like a Ferminator brush and it has a clippers with different like guard lengths and mm -hmm. it sucks the fur as you're brushing and cutting and it does sound like a little hand vacuum so it is a little loud so it took Willie some adjusting to but he let me do it he let me groom him today and if you just don't look at his chest, I did an okay job. <laughs> <laughs> just don't look at his chest. And like, he knows. <laughs> he totally knows it's bad. It's adorable. But you can also tell that, like, he feels better because the Grinch toes are trimmed. And I trimmed mm. his wings. So he's not as matted. But the poor boy, he has, like, a skin infection that he gets, mm. like, every summer. Uh, I think because it got so hot and now it's so cold, his skin is just super angry. So I've got to get him some antibiotics for that. But I wouldn't have been able to see it as well had I not groomed him. So, yeah, but <laughs> I groomed him and I feel pretty proud. I think I'm going to start doing that for him myself going forward because he gets so anxious whenever I take him to a groomer that it's just not worth it. Like they can't even <laughs> do their jobs because he's so intensely anxious that I'm gone. Mm -hmm. So I think <laughs> I just have to get better at it over time. I think I will. I'll choose a much longer <laughs> clipper guard for his chest Maybe. going forward. What about you? Cookie season ends next week. Nice. Wow, that was fast. We had a booth at one of the walmarts mm -hmm. and sold like 99 packages which is awesome holy smokes it was also on like a super windy cold morning and i think a lot of it was pity sales which i'll take yeah you know a thousand percent and we got a lot of donations which is great because that just goes straight to the troop we don't actually mm -hmm. put that towards the cookies That's and nice. Yeah. I will be excited as of the 24th when the season officially ends. <laughs> and I'm sure my cookie mom will be very excited when the 24th hits and the season ends. Yeah. So it'll be a lot smoother sailing the rest of the school year with scouts after this. Awesome. Shall we? We shall. If you want a playlist of all our episodes on YouTube, Click the link in our show notes or in our link tree and subscribe today for not only a list of our full catalog, but a separate list as well, just of our Can You Crack the Cramp Word segments. 
A great way to support the show, if you want to help us out but you can't do so financially, is to leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Good Pods, Podcast Addict, and or Audible. Got something you want to say? Shoot us an email over at yieldcrimepodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your story ideas, see any gifts you send our way, or if you just want to say hello. We're pretty friendly. Speaking of friendly, if you'd like to have real-time conversations with us, consider joining our Discord over at the Cultivate Network. You can chat with us over at the Old Crimers Cubby, or catch up with any of the other great creators that are part of the Cultivate family of podcasts. Just click the link in our show notes or over on our link tree to get started today. And we will be having another sale at our Tea Public shop March 20th through the 24th, where you can enjoy 35% off all of our merchandise. And on that note, as always, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Madison. And we'll see you next time with another tale as old as crime.